Hey, gun people. Gun, not gum, dumb, dumb, doom, whatever. All right. So I'm watching this episode on uh, Hollywood fact or fiction, and this guy wanted to know if you could, uh, there was a scene out of Criminal Minds where uh, one of the stars dropped down, shot a dude through a windshield with a 9 mil, and then um, shot the guy underwater. And so they were wondering, would a Glock operate underwater? Now, I've seen a Glock fire underwater before, so I kind of figured this would work. Uh, but you never can tell. You get, you know, water is much more dense, and it's not as uh, light as air. So anytime you get more compression, pressure, and all that other crap going on, you, you, you're likely to get a malfunction. But let me tell you, the Glock functions like a like brilliant watch these three shots underwater um it felt a little sluggish maybe now all we have to see is whether it actually penetrated the windshield or not <laughs> it's harder too to get your sight picture because the gas with the water disturbs it so much that well we'll see if i did it or not absolutely now i kind of figured that it wouldn't go through only because i've seen actual live nine mil rounds bounce off windshields and cars now, this windshield, you'll notice, is pretty much vertical. And on windshields, in order for wind drag, it's flattened out a little bit, and it's a little more horizontal. And that's why you even get more ricochet. So if a 9 mil won't go through it when it's vertical, imagine if it's going to go through it when it's straight. And again, I, I can't tell you the number of scenes that I've been on. I mean, it's not like hundreds, but it's been several enough to where I'm pretty convinced that a 9 mil doesn't go through a windshield most of the time. And, uh, you know, I've seen 5.56 bounce off windshields, too. So, you know, speed, weight, all those factors. But I kind of thought it was interesting that this, uh, that they showed, I think they show it slow motion here. Now, while the Glock functioned perfectly, the 9mm round wasn't powerful enough to actually get... You can actually see the round bounce off. It's falling right there. Pretty cool get through the windshield. In fact, you can see the round bounce right off on the first shot. Pretty cool. So, because the 9mm didn't work, they tried a 357. Okay, so they put three rounds in a GP100 357. Figure they got a much more velocity, uh, heavier round than a 9mm, and more velocity. Well, I take that back. I'm not sure 357 has more velocity. It can. I don't know about underwater. But, uh... You're putting, I'm pretty sure it's putting out more pressure, but some of the reloaders may be more apt to answer that factually. But I figured, you know, a 357 is going to be a little bit more powerful than a 9mm. And what's kind of funny is the Glock, a semi automatic, which with a lot of moving parts, because a slide has to move, it's got to hook the round, it's got to eject the round, then it's got to. And you can see the action here on this uh, 1911 demonstration. It's got to eject the round, it's got to load a new round. Hammer's got to drop, so pretty uh, pretty lot of moving parts for underwater, and a Glock worked perfect. Found in, it's got a recall. So the Glock functioned perfectly underwater. I get so tired of people cracking on Glocks, man. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm I'm not a Glock worshiper, but they are a good gun, and they always go bang. But anyway, I digress. Let's take a look at this 357. Okay, so on a on the revolver, they fired the first round double action. One pull of the trigger makes the hammer cock back, and then it lets it go forward and fires. So there was two actions. One is the cocking back. The other one is the firing. Single action is if you would manually cock it back. Now they try this in double action, and the gun goes click. No bang. So, and the reason they're saying it didn't go bang, which makes sense to me, is... There's a lot of water and dense water versus air, and hammers are usually weighted to hit the round the right way, not to over penetrate the primer, uh, you know, but it didn't work on double action. So they go to single action and try it that way. So when they opened the revolver and looked at it, they could see that it had a light strike. So the firing pin hit the primer, it kind of dented it, but it didn't have enough force because of the water to fire the round in double action. Okay, and you see he's going to cock the hammer. This is called single action, and see if this will fire underwater. As much forward momentum as possible, and hopefully set off the primer. Kaboom. So single action worked. 
Okay, and they show the uh, slow motion of the compressed air. Seven was definitely thumpier. And Look at that. Woo-wee. But it still wasn't... Did you notice the three little flashes, the kind of one, two, three, like a heartbeat? Those, I guess, are the waves going through the water and uh, the shock wave. And he said he's feeling it in, in the water. So I'm assuming he has earplugs on. If he doesn't, that's got to be loud. But um, they, they go on a little bit farther here. And they show this in slow motion on the 3v7 going off. 50 -50. One, two. Didn't get through. It still was good stump, safety and glass. It was, and it was stumpier. Absolutely. So what's the... So the 357 did not go through. Although it functioned, if you do single action, I think the Glock functioned more normal and is more reliable underwater. I know the Glock haters will be here. Oh, it's no good. It's plastic. Oh, whatever. So now they're going to use a 454 Casul. Much bigger round, much bigger handgun. We got the 454 Casul, right? So we tried a 9mm. Yep. That's like throwing a ping pong ball at this thing. Went to the 357, it's like taking a tennis ball and trying to bust through it. This is like taking an Olympic shot put and trying to throw it through the glass, okay? Now, when he says a shot put, it's because the round is so heavy and big and round. That's why I always say bigger is better. I like the 45, it makes a bigger hole. It's. Uh, when we were on the SWAT team in the Air Force, we used to call it the flying manhole cover. Is a, a 45 is like a manhole cover hitting somebody. It, it's just a bigger, heavier round. Uh, and the 454 is bigger than the 45. Okay, because they're using another revolver, they're using this Ruger. Uh, the first round, they were going to try it double action. Now, remember, the 357 did not shoot double action. He had to cock it. Because this is a bigger gun and you have more mass and the spring is probably stronger and the, the hammer is probably heavier, more mass, it's probably going to cut through the water easier than a lighter uh, hammer. And that's why it fires on the double action. And there's a big hole there. Pretty cool. Good little test. Uh, I've seen an AK fired underwater, and AK does fine too. You just lose so much velocity. That's why they shoot rounds underwater when they're trying to get uh, a ballistics on a, on a bullet. Uh, they don't want it hitting anything to change the ballistics or markings, so they fire it into a tank that they know it's not going to go all the way through the water. It's going to lose all velocity, and then it'll slowly sink down to the bottom, and you can pick it up with minimal damage. Um, you know, it, when they do ballistics, they fire the gun out of the water, into the water. This was actually fired underwater. I thought it was a good little test. If you want to check out Hollywood Weapons, uh, I'm using this on a fair use act for uh, education purposes. But if you want to go check out the uh, episode, uh, I saw it on Netflix. I've only watched one episode. I'm not sure what they're doing next, but I thought it was kind of interesting. All right, well, then that there.